In 2013, a proposed route into West Yorkshire went out to consultation, but earlier this year, another route was put forward by HS2 bosses and goes straight through the village of Crofton near Wakefield. Government has already said it's committed to HS2 despite strong opposition. Well, an hour ago, the minister said uh, that they had made their mind up about Croft and it's all to do with the way in which HS2 will come into West Yorkshire from Sheffield. And they haven't decided if that'll come from the centre of Sheffield or via Meadow Hall. So whilst we've been told there'll be a tunnel in Woodlesford... Well, the future for Crofton isn't quite so clear. When I spoke to the HS2 minister, Andrew Jones, an hour ago, he said that Crofton was still in limbo. What we can say is that we this new M18 alignment alters the route into the new Crofton depot. That's to the south of Leeds in Wakefield. Basically, HS2 Limited are working up a number of options. We've, we've had some concerns legitimate concerns from the local community saying that the town might be encircled by railway lines. We're looking at what we can do to potentially change that uh, and we'll be consulting on that uh, as with a potential new location in 2017. So the waiting goes on, but is it a reprieve? Well, let's go now live to Crofton where our reporter Charles Engwell is this morning. Good morning, Charles. Good morning, Liz, and welcome to the heart of the village of Crofton near Wakefield and actually at Crofton Community Centre, where I'm surrounded by members of the Crofton Against HS2 Society. They've been campaigning about this for a long time now. If I do a 360, looking around me, up in the sky, it's dark and miserable, it's overcast, it's cold. I look around me, there's a lot of green, green fields, green fences, green trees with that bit of mix of brown autumnal leaves and around lots of West Yorkshire rolling hills. It's a lovely spot to be in. But actually where I'm looking right now, over those rolling green hills that just go off into the distance, that is exactly where a rail line would be going if the plans as they stand affect Crofton in the way that people believe that they're going to. If I do a 360 again, actually, there's then going to be a depot on my other side if the plans go ahead as they are now. It is ultimately a horseshoe around Crofton. It is a rail ring road, so to speak, that will surround this village. Now, around 7,000 residents could be affected if these plans go ahead. And someone who knows that is Paul Sandham, because Paul lives within 60 metres of where the rail line is going to be. Paul, this uncertainty that's been delivered today, you were expecting uh, possibly an announcement to say whether these plans were going to go ahead or there was going to be a change of direction. How do you feel that your house is still potentially at risk? You know, you've got Christmas coming up, not knowing until next year what's going to exactly happen to Crofton. How does that feel? It feels appalling. The The history of HS2 in this area has just been one long catalogue of, of misinformation and increasing demands on this community. We're, <coughs> we're totally surrounded, 330 degrees around our village uh, with a, a high-speed line that isn't fit for purpose. A route that was rejected in 2011 by HS2 Limited themselves has been of too high an impact. Why now change that? So this route... You've been telling me a little earlier, this route was um, actually rejected and then went back to. So this was taken off the table and then put back on. And this is going to run potentially right next to your, your house. What type of uh, information have you had? How have you been consulted on this? How have you had your feelings and your emotions taken into account by HS2? We've received a flyer uh, to the occupier of the house uh, with no further information other than we were within 500 metres of the line. And that uh, was followed by a, an event in the village uh, at which the Department for Transport and HS2 Limited provided some appalling, shabby information. It was uh, a, an absolute disgrace. Uh, they, they upset a lot of people in the village. So the weather here this morning, it's cold, but it's not as bitter as I think the mood is now. It's really an uncertain thing. And uh, as, a, as a campaign group, how are you going to go forward? How are you going to keep the fight going to, to get basically, you know, HS2 to change their mind here? Uh, HS2 Limited have left both sides of the village blighted and with the depot. This is against HS2 Limited's own criteria and we will be seeking a legal challenge to the two routes. It, it is improper that they should hold two routes open at the same time. And obviously the argument can be made that unless villages like Crofton 
you know, are affected in the ways that they're going to be. It's not going to split the village directly down the middle. It is going to run around the outsides, as we've been hearing that U-shape. Without that type of thing, infrastructure won't improve. You won't get the improvements that, that are needed in connecting the north and the south of England. The, the connectivity between north and south of England is only provided to Leeds. There is no provision for Sheffield or anywhere south of here, right down to Totten in the East Midlands. The, the line itself doesn't, it isn't fit for purpose. So it, it, it simply doesn't work. What do you then want to see? The last thing before we go and we think about this and, and you're going to put you know, your plan of action as a campaign group forward, what ultimately, in the new year do you want to see after thinking about this over Christmas and, and having these worries built up? A, a scrapping of phase two of HS2. Complete scrapping? Complete scrapping. And then just not connecting the north and the south in the time that they're proposing? That, that will be happening anyway on the East Coast main line. OK, thank you, Paul Sandham. As you can probably hear in Paul's voice and as I've been talking to people here, Liz, the campaigners, they are not happy. The weather is cold, the mood is far more bitter and they've got an uncertain time ahead because we were expecting the announcement today of what was going to happen to Crofton but now it's going to be a wait until the new year.